like I think people are a little bit too comfortable just picking their information off of whatever their device is, whether it's their, their laptop or whether it's their phone or whatever, um, instead of actually getting out there and going like, okay, there's a seminar and I should try that. I've never had a time in my professional life where Americans have been more concerned about their own self-protection. Okay, we're going to start the final part of my interview with the amazing Dr. Mark Cheng. Um, here, we're going to talk a little bit, we're going to start out talking about the state of the industry, where it's at, um, how he sees it, you know, where we see the future going. Um, I think this is a very important thing, especially, you know, what I'm trying to accomplish with this channel is I'm trying to expose you to probably a lot of people and a lot of systems or approaches that you may not have heard of before. And probably you haven't heard of them before because you have your own biases towards, you know, what you know. And also it's much harder to get a broader uh, look at everything that's out there these days. You know, everybody's so, uh, as we say in this interview, uh, you know, it's tribalized basically. Um, so it's my goal to bring you dissident voices, you know, really good subject matter experts that know their systems, that know their principles, and it helps you get better information for your own self-protection. So we talk a little bit about that in this, and, um, and then, you know, we end up, you know, I'll, I'll make my closing remarks, but I think you're going to find that, uh, you know, this is a great source for you, and um, his K3 concepts are universal, it has nothing to do with a martial art or anything like that. It just makes you a better better practitioner with your human machine is the best way I can say to put it. So, you know, definitely check him out. You know, we have all the contact information uh, below in the notes. Um, but without further ado, my final segment with uh, Dr. Mark Chang. How do you see the industry right now as far as um, communication, you know, there used to be, there used to be a community and I'm not talking just martial arts, I'm talking martial arts, boxing, everything, the old written, you know, print community, there was, there was a lot more continuity in where everybody kind of gathered to get information. And, and there was more of a community sense. I, I've noticed over, you know, the last 15 years, especially there's less of a, a kind of a, a community. I don't mean like group think, but I mean, where places where we can all go everybody seemed to have balkanized and they're in their own worlds right now nobody's you know really really sharing the information now mma does that in a different way but they're doing it very specifically to win a competition and right. so they're gonna they're they're very open to new things that will help them win a competition that's not necessarily you know i, I look at it more for the general public you know you know jack dempsey wrote that book um championship fighting and he wrote it basically because he saw Mar uh, he saw the martial art of boxing being being shifted far too much towards composite competition and it was leaving a lot of young men that could be very effective in protecting themselves they will never be a, a world-class boxer but they could learn to protect themselves using body weight strikes and all the great things that traditional boxing taught you um I guess what I'm trying to say is I, I don't feel that we have a um, a real community group. I just, I feel like we're more balkanized than we've ever been. Yeah. Um, and the part of the reason I like to do this is because I like to bring people from all different disciplines in and talk about what's going on. Cause I just don't think there's enough of that information. I think we make assumptions about why somebody trains a certain way, or this is effective versus this. Um, and, and there's no background there because there's no real communication. Yep, I think there's no communication and and like I hate to throw stones at the net because I'm not really throwing stones at the net, but I think a lot of it is because of the net. I mean, yeah. like the net in a lot of ways. I mean, once it became ubiquitous, like once everyone started having Internet access and once like the experience became so much more user friendly um, and then everything like became mobile, it, it got to the point where like print media became, you know, it, it, it was going to be the swan song of print media, like it or not. And as someone who who served in, I believe, is still somewhere on the listing as a, as a contributing editor to Black Belt magazine, I'm kind of sad about that because it's like, you know, Black Belt brought together a lot of different people, like you're saying, like the yeah. martial arts media, especially periodicals like Black Belt or in, back in the day, Inside Kung Fu um, or, um, you know, the other different industry magazines and periodicals and publications, I think gave people a, a place to come come together more. Um, and now a lot of times people just look for like, who's the, who are the people that uh, 
say the stuff that resonates with me on and who are they on Twitter or on Facebook or on Instagram and like, let me follow them. And so what, like you're saying, people become more vulcanized or people become more, I'll say tribalized, like, because oh, they, okay. they, they, they like that there's, they like what they're hearing from someone and because their message that they're hearing resonates with them and their biases or their experiences or their preconceived notions, like it's, it's just, um, what's it called? Dunning-Kruger effect. So like we're seeing the Dunning-Kruger effect on speed. Okay. Um, and I think there's no real way around it, unfortunately, like black belt, I think was, and still is awesome. I mean, like, I, you know, whenever I get to the newsstands and pick up an, an issue of black belt or like hit up the site and like, and check out the articles, I love what I'm reading. I mean, like the, a lot of the writers that have been writing since like, I've become a little bit more preoccupied with other things are contributing some great stuff. Um, but like, I think people are a little bit too comfortable just picking their information off of whatever their device is, whether it's their, their laptop or whether it's their phone or whatever, um, instead of actually getting out there and going like, okay, there's a seminar and I should try that. Or like this guy that I'm, I'm always following in these magazines, like says like, wow, this is a style I've never heard of. And like, I know other people make fun of it, but Sistema, like, wow, this guy, Mark Chang, seems to really like it. Oh, Dan Inasano did Sistema too? Like, wow, maybe I should check that out. Yeah. Rather than just like, you know, oh, these guys on, on whatever parody site are talking crap about it. You know, there's, there's so much stuff in feel that isn't communicated in two-dimensional like video or, right. you know, even in, even in print media that like makes sense until you feel it. I mean, certainly the first time, like, like to talk about Sistema, the first time I saw it, I thought like, <laughs> whatever. Um, and then when I got to feel it firsthand from Martin Wheeler, I was like, holy shit, this is, this was like quite the eureka moment. And like now, every time I get the chance to be on the, on the mat with, with Martin Wheeler, I'm like jumping at the, at the chance. There's so much nuance in there. And the only, and again, right along the lines of what you and I've been saying all morning. Like, if you don't slow down, you will not get the, you will not get the, the, the nuance, the detail. And, and part of what makes, I think, Martin's delivery of Sistema so dope is his ability to target on the fly, like from these seemingly impossible positions. And then like, he practices it so, like with such discipline that he's able to hit those targets at higher and higher rates of speed with more and more chaos in the mix. And, you know, even with like multiple people coming at him in different ways, he's like, you know, he looks almost like amoebic in terms of how he moves. And he's got that kind of ability to relax and flow. And it's like, damn, that's goals. That's goals. Like rather than being super tense and super like amped up and super rigid, he's like, he looks like he could school you half asleep. That's, that to me is awesome. He, um, he used to be years ago at Fight House in New York, I think, before Martin he went out. I'm, I'm trying familiar. to think if it was, it was a, some, there was a Sistema guy. I thought it was Martin uh, early. I know he's in LA now. I know, I know, right. I know that's where he is now, but I thought he might have been like, I'm talking like 2001, 2003. He may have um, done a workshop there, but I think yeah. Fight House in New York was uh, either Frankie or Frankie Filetti, or I can't remember who the other guy is in New York. Um, my old roommate, I think I, whom I've mentioned to you, TJ, Dr. TJ Desh, he's the guy that was like the preeminent scholar on African martial arts in the English language. Um, mm -hmm. And speaking of Hickson, uh, who we were talking about earlier, um, TJ was one of Hickson's students back during his heyday when he was fighting in Japan. Um, yeah. So TJ was training in Sistema with, I can't remember the name of who he was, who he was training with in New York, but I knew there was someone other than Frankie that TJ was training with there. Yeah, it was a, it was a Russian. It was, it, was, it was a Russian guy that was there for, for a while. He was a really nice guy, and he was in there. But I remember I, Martin. I don't think I've got a chance to meet him, but um, I've never. It's funny. I've I've never looked at anything like that and just made a, a blanket call on it because there's so many um, there's so many people I've been so surprised at that did different types of uh, of strikes. I, I knew there's a Capoeira guy that. You know, I assumed it was just, you know, all, all the dance moves that this guy was a great fighter. He was, he's truly a great street fighter. And, and again, he modified what he did. He didn't do any of the crazy, you know, um, uh, 
you know, production, moves, but because of what he learned and how he learned to move his body, everything else was easy for him. You know, mm -hmm. he would learn other things on there. So I just, I don't, I don't understand the, you know, I, I think the big thing is that, and I wish I'd learned this a lot younger um, for any uh, aspect of combat sports, martial arts, self-defense, it's really your human machine and being able to move it correctly. And, you know, the more you can do that, the more you can do to be functional. And I hate to use that word because it's kind of like hackney, but, but the more you can make your body, you know, move correctly and flow correctly. And, you know, uh, and there's, there's so many different aspects you can learn. You know, um, I tell people all the time, I said, I can show you the most advanced quote unquote technique that we have. I said, there's nothing that I wouldn't show you. The problem is, you know, kind of like prerequisites, you don't have the coordination to pull it off. I can tell just by how you're, you're standing right now, you won't be able to, and you'll be frustrated. Now I can show you get that same result that that guy gets in two moves. It'll take you four moves, but you'll get all the same injuries. And I can show it to you with things that you currently can do with your coordination. And then what's interesting is that's the spark for the person to get, you know, I, that's how I get people to slow down. That's how I get them to do it because they want to be able to do that more complex movement. And they realize that, well, you know, if I just keep going as hard and as fast as I can, I'm never going to, I'm never going to get these fundamentals down. Yep. Totally. I, I think that kind of that ability to, to slow down and, and, and unfortunately, I think a lot of people don't appreciate that onboarding process. Like, what does it take for me to be able to access this ability? And, and, you know, everyone wants to find the shortcut, but sometimes the shortcut is going to be like slow down enough so that you can understand these processes. Like what are the building block blocks that are in place? What are the attributes you need to develop so that you can be efficient at what you do? Right. You know? So right. It, it's so funny. There's so many different disciplines that are like that. I remember attending a, a yoga class in LA and I got famous teacher can't remember his name, but, but he was, he taught out of Santa Monica for a long time. Mark, he taught, you talk about a total Southern Cal class, right? I walk in here, everybody's like, you know, a 10 and above and they're all doing it. And I'm walking, I've never been in this class where usually everybody sits and waits. These guys are all showing off. They're doing one hand stands, you know, they're doing everything. They're shooting every, you know, dropping back and everything. I'm going, Oh man, I'm way out of my class here. <laughs> so this guy comes in, banging music i mean the first half is amazing like music it just it was really fun we're doing all the movements and everything getting my butt kicked couldn't really keep up with it uh second half of it he slows it down then does longer stretches boom and at the very end at the very end we'll do a, a short meditation and all he says to them is he goes i hope you really enjoyed class he goes i just want you to know what you just did had nothing to do with yoga and he left and that was it because what he was saying is, I know you idiots just want to work out. You don't understand. You're not going to pay attention. So I'm going to give you really good music. I'm going to give you a great workout. You're going to walk out of here thinking great. He goes, but you don't know the first thing about yoga, if that's what you think this is about. And it was really interesting. As an instructor, I took that on board. And I, I learned so much from other instructors, you know, and this guy just understood. He understood the environment that he was in. And, you know, and I talked to him about it later and he said, yeah, he goes, what will happen is two or three people will approach me after. And he goes, and those are the people that are going to take it to the level that I like to take it to. He yeah. said, but everybody else wants this. And he goes, there's no problem with what I just showed them. He goes, it's great for fitness. It's great for, for what they did. He goes, it'll help their bodies. He goes, but that's not yoga, you know? And I think that's where people miss when they're training um, combat sports, martial arts, self-defense that, you know, it's all about you. You're the one that's going to have to do it. You know, that, so why wouldn't you want to lay a foundation and why wouldn't you want your body to tell you what the pace is, you know, to able to get you yet. As long as you're doing it right, it doesn't matter if you're still at a foundational level. You know, I've never in any of the times that I've had to use information to save my life, I've never had to do anything beyond basically what we would call a group one movement. You know, it's all very disappointing. You know, reality is usually very, you know, inconvenient and disappointing. And I've never got to do the really cool move, the really, you know, the, the John Wick looking type of thing. It's always been some basic strike that just, you know, I've done a thousand times, worked perfectly, got the result, and that was it. But the reason I felt so confident at that is because I drilled it and drilled it and drilled it. It was just part of me. Um, and I just wish people would, 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 I'm hoping this conversation is going to open people up to exploring more than just what, you know, ever, whatever Instagram's telling them to do or whatever their favorite influencers telling them to do, 
because, uh, you know, I just see too many people just making blanket statements. And a lot of times there are certain, there are certain disciplines in martial arts that really, they probably wouldn't be the best for that person. You know, they, they probably wouldn't get the best results uh, for themselves. And I just think, I think that's what I, I come back to with our conversation is that balkanization tribalism. I think it prevents people from exploring other options that are, you know, very useful. I mean, I think there's there's certain there's certain value to a tribe, right? There's certain value to a tribe in terms in, in terms of like giving you confidence. For the people that really severely lack confidence or really severely lack identity, like I, I think for people like that, they're like having some sort of a, a a tribe or some sort of a social network to you know cheer you on, to make you feel like you're you're like good enough, you're worthy enough, you're whatever enough to be able to interact. There's some value in that, but the message behind that tribe has to be on point. So that you're not breeding like sociopaths who are like then become like you know too far to one side or the other yeah um you know and that's why i put together like the program that i put together with k3 like k3 combat the idea behind that was to be the the gate the quote-unquote gateway drug to martial arts you know people like oh you're coming up with a new martial art no i'm not coming up with a new martial art i'm like taking aspects of training aspects or training drills from different martial arts in different in different like combat sports or different combat traditions that I've been exposed to over the years and broken them down and said like, okay, we're going to do these drills and here's what you're looking for. Look for this, you know, because a lot of times instructors say you're going to do this and you're just going to do that. And that's it. Like you will do this horse stance, bend your knees, get lower without really explaining, okay, this is why we're training this. Like, so that you have the hip strength and hip mobility and have the ability to keep your spine vertical in these areas oh that pain that you feel there that's because your muscles around your ankle are kind of stiff so like you don't have that ankle dorsiflexion that you need to be able to do that oh that knee pain that's because like your quads are too tight along these lines so now that you're having to pry your knees out to sit down and move your hips forward in ways that they haven't had to since you were probably three those muscles are now screaming at you it's all a good thing it's like training like just like your muscles would be screaming at you if i had you do a, a zillion curls like now you're feeling that in your hips because like you want to be able to move. So like being able to take the traditional stuff that we do or being able to take any martial arts movement or any movement and contextualize it and say like, this is what we're doing. Here are the fine points that you should be looking for. And this is the why, here are the benefits. So like it's been, like I always talk about the three kings of programming is what you're doing beneficial, challenging, and fun. Like I stole that from Gray Cook, my mentor. Right. Um, and you know, Gray's thing was like, if it's not beneficial, why do it? If it's not challenging, it won't move the needle. Like there's no growth behind it. If it's not fun, people will tune out. Exactly. So like those three things, those three considerations are really big for me as far as like, okay, why am I having people do X, Y, or Z? And so with K3, the whole idea is like everything that we do has to be beneficial, challenging, and fun so that people understand why I'm doing all of these things. Like this thing that looks like it's capoeira, yes, you're right, it's from capoeira, or it could be from silat, depending on the drill. Why are we doing it? Because now you're practicing, like changing your visual field and still keeping your eye on target, even though you're changing visual field. Your vestibular inputs, your balance feels different because the inner ear is going through different positions. Can you still keep your eyes on target? Can you still kick when you're in those positions? And it looks like it's something really silly, really slow, but it's very neurologically rich. And so are you going to slow down enough to, to benefit from it? Or are you going to let your ego, your pride, you're like, ah, that looks dumb. Your, 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 your ignorance for like, are you going to allow that to rob you of the benefits that, that lie in those exercises? So with K3, the idea that I put together was like, let's take these things that, that I found their high yield, explain them, contextualize them. And so once we can contextualize them, then people can appreciate them better. And that I think has been good to get other people who ordinarily wouldn't do martial arts now suddenly asking about martial arts. Yeah. Yeah. That, that to me is, is, you know, like you said, providing a gateway to people because most people don't, the, 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 I try to tell people, like, you have no idea the fear level people have walking into a studio of any type, you know, they don't want to be made fun of. They're not sure what to expect. You know, it's just, it takes a huge leap of faith to, to come in and, if you can lower that bar to get it to be fun, to get it to be, you know, uh, um, you know, something that they, they like to do and they're encouraged to do. And um, I, that, that to me is just huge. And again, it goes back to, 
I approach everything now as the way I watch my little kids do stuff when they started to learn gymnastics. It's, it, you know, they, they were horrible. They were terrible, but you know, they laughed and they kept doing it. And then you come back, you know, two months later, you're like, Oh my God, you know, they're doing a the kid's doing a backflip now. You know, it's, it, it's just, they incrementally had fun with it and they were not discouraged from it and they didn't beat themselves up mentally. And um, I, I think that's, that's probably, that that's probably the one thing that uh, we need a lot more of, you know, we're so balkanized in, in society right now. Anyways, I mean, more so than I've ever, ever seen. Um, I, I want to go into one area and, and not from a political sense, but it's just something I've known. I've noticed a lot of positive things uh, in explore in, in, um, in exposing, exposing people to the history of the Chinese, you know, coming to America. I've noticed like, cool, like even shows like that are fun to watch, like warrior, which is yeah, great. Totally. It, it tells, it tells the story. And of course, obviously we dealt recently with just, just random violence against, against uh, the, the Chinese community. Um, it's, it's interesting. I mean, this, I don't think the story of, of Chinese coming to America is really well understood by people and, and, and that history that, that, um, that, that came here. And, um, you know, shows like Warrior kind of, you know, fictionalize it and, and, and show, you know, they, they show action, but they actually hit some hard subjects coming in there. Um, are you seeing with, with a lot of the change, are you seeing more opportunities for um, the Chinese community to, to, you know, let people know their history and, and share that? I think Hollywood these days is doing an amazing job. Like we're, we're in, man we're in a uh, we're having this recording this conversation at a time when like shang you know shang chi just dropped uh the kung fu tv series was just remade with um olivia liang um you know warrior you know the which was based off of bruce lee's notes that shen and lee put together i mean there's so much stuff out there that's in media that has has never been that way so like for asians to be able to tell our own stories um with some fidelity to our experiences it's just totally like this is unheard of like at least during my lifetime um and it's it's freaking exciting i mean like you, you know it's not that there wasn't multimedia in and like certainly the movie industry in hong kong back when i was a kid there that that was there but like here in la in hollywood to for there to be this kind of this kind of storytelling and respect for actual history is has been something really exciting really cool and very unusual yeah and you see blockbusters like you know just from the entertainment side you see a blockbuster like crazy rich asians uh which you know whether you liked it or not it it, it was very positive all the characters uh it, i thought it brought up some great contrast in the community and 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 what's available and it's funny like my 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 kids really, we expose our kids. I mean, we take them, they go to the Hindu temples, they go, my wife is just in the community all the time. So my kids are exposed to everything, but um, they really, they really are fascinated. They want to go to Singapore now. They want to go see places. I, I just think that um, when I showed my son uh, a couple of uh, scenes, I had to be careful what I showed him because he's kind of young, of Warrior, you know, some of the, some <laughs> of the scenes there and in the background. Yeah, you have to, you have to be very careful. Um, but it was fun. It was fun to, to explain to him. He said, oh, yeah. He said, you know, they came over and I said, you see, you know, I knew from the Irish side, you know, what would it would it happen? And, you know, for those of you that haven't seen it, it's, it's it's a story of San Francisco. It's a story of cultures colliding. You have the Irish workers, you have the uh, wasp, basically, you know, uh, patricians that run the city. And then you have the Chinese immigrants coming in and how they all interact with each other and, and, uh, and go through. And it's based off of you know, obviously what, what happened, but it's based off of a, a concept that Bruce Lee had, um, you know, before he died, he put down as a, a show that he was interested in, um, in sharing that, that story. So this is, uh, this is the adapted version of that. And it, it's really good. Historically, it's interesting. Um, and culturally, it's really interesting. I think they do a really good job of, of talking about the different cultures. Totally, totally. I, I, I have to say that Warrior is one of those, um, uh, admittedly, I slept on it when it, it was when it first came out on on Cinemax. Um, didn't watch it, and honestly, I think back at that time when it came, first came out, I was so busy that like I would probably turn on the TV and fall asleep like yeah. within minutes. Um, but then, like you know, after it came to HBO Max, like I, I watched it right away. I was that was the, I think Warrior 
yeah, actually come to come to think of it, Warrior was the reason why I subscribed to HBO Max. Yeah. Um, just so I could watch that. And I enjoyed every second of it. And I think a lot of the storytelling of it, as far as the mix of cultures, the culture clashes, the the struggles. I mean, for a lot of people, I mean, let's face it, you and I are rather privileged because we come from a demographic where our work allows us to see different parts of the world or allows us to interact with people from different parts of the world. Like there are a lot of folks who will never leave their hometown or rarely leave their hometown or like their experience is, is like marginal when it comes to outside of their own culture. And I think when you get to do more and more of that, you get to see like, oh, there's a different way of doing things than the way that I grew up with. There's a different way of speaking than the way that like I speak or that I hear. And then there's a different way of like interacting with the world. And then when you can start seeing the value in those different ways, it doesn't necessarily change what you do. It just makes you respect that there are other ways of doing things. And so you become less like judgmental, less like, uh, I think less fearful. Well, it's funny too, you adjust. I know when I traveled, when I did, I did, you know, 52 countries and depending on where you are in the world, you'll adjust the way you communicate with those people because they're used to either more used to the subject matter that you're talking about, or they're very reticent to the subject subject matter that you're talking about because of their, whatever their, their political uh, situation is. You know, I know if I'm in Norway and I'm I have to be very careful how I put the information out because they're very concerned about, you know, ever using violence for any reason whatsoever. Whereas if I go over to Eastern Europe, they're asking me, they could care less about the ramifications. They understand when it would ever happen. And it's really interesting the questions you get that way. Um, and then you go to Asia and you get, it's all over the place in Asia, you know, how people react to things. And, you know, as an instructor, it's great. And also you get to appreciate, you know, different approaches, like something that we would find absolutely absurd in our country, you know, works in another country. It works totally. really well, you know, uh, you know, the way they politically do things or the way that they, they expediently do things. And you just, you, you learn so much. And I think, you know, yeah, yeah, we were very privileged to the fact that we get to interact with, with other cultures and it's really shaped the way I, I, I kind of look at things. Um, you know, Mark, I, I, I really appreciate the fact that you, you know, if people don't follow you on Instagram, they absolutely have to, we'll have all that contact for them, but you just, you do such a good mix of, of, of everything of, of just, you know, the, your medical side, your training, um, your journey, interacting with your children and how you're training them and watching their progressions in, in the martial arts and keeping all of that in, in perspective with people and, and talking about that. Um, I, I hope you continue to, do, I, I know you will continue to do that, but uh, I hope you realize that uh, there's a lot of people that when I mention uh, your friend, that they're, they're, they're taken aback because a lot of people follow you and a lot of people really respect the work you're doing. And like I said, I've been privileged to know you for God, all, almost close to two decades. Yes. And, um, and I appreciate that. And thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us. And I'm sure people will have follow up questions. And uh, hopefully we'll have another discussion in person soon. I would love that. And I got to thank you for always I mean, like you were really open, really encouraging for me when I reached out um, back then as part of Black Belt to come and find out more about TFT. Um, and, you know, I, it's been a huge honor and like a, truly a blessing to you know, have you as a, one of my friends, like a big brother, to me throughout these these two decades. I mean, you've seen you've seen me evolve through the years, um, and so right. uh, a lot of who I am these days I owe to you. So thank you. Well, I I will I'll take that, but I don't think I earned it. Uh, just you're a you're an amazing person. I hope more people um, get to experience you know your programs because. You're, you're very thoughtful in your approach. And I think uh, no matter what they want to pursue, I think if they, they go through the methods of, of K3, they'll be better prepared to do whatever they want. And they'll also, they'll, they'll also have a full physical understanding of their body, you know, but which, which most people just don't have. You're very good at the full integration, giving the full system, not just punching and kicking, not just fitness, not just the spiritual. You're very good at melding them all together. And that's a unique talent, uh, talent stack. And um, so anyways, we will talk soon, my friend. I look forward to that. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. And that concludes my interview with Dr. Mark Chang. He's truly a renaissance man. You know, he, you know, whether it's medical, whether it's physical training, you know, functional training, um, whether it's movements, patterns, 
martial arts, combat sports. He not only is an amazing practitioner, but he also knows everybody in the industry and he knows all the different approaches and he's done it at the highest levels. So I hope that came across in the interview. And um, again, he's, he's somebody who just is a great human being and I'm very proud to call him friend. Now, make sure that you check out everything. If, if nothing else, this K3 concept is such a universal concept. It will just make your human machine better for whatever you want to practice. Um, I, I would definitely have you check that out. And all the contact information is below for his Instagram and all his other socials and uh, website. So uh, anyways, I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed giving it to you. And re realize we're going to be back with more subject matter experts and a lot of that is driven by your feedback. So whether it's a comment that you make on the YouTube channel, whether it's an email you send in, uh, if it's a comment on Instagram, those are the things that drive who we bring to you. So continue to do that. And please continue to share the channel. Subscriptions are important, so make sure that you get your friends to subscribe. Please share videos with anybody you think would be interested in these videos. And uh, hit the notification bell. Other than that, all the best.